Hi, this is Donna Lewis with the Clark County Park District again. And since Easter is right around the corner, I can't believe it because it's pretty chilly out today. I just had my winter coat on. Um, since it's just around the corner, we're going to talk about real Peter Cottontails. They don't bring you eggs and they don't lay eggs. So I'm not sure how eggs got associated with Easter bunnies. But we're going to talk about the Eastern Cottontail Rabbit. And that's the, what we have in Ohio. Its scientific name is Silva... Silvalagus floridanus. Okay, that's the weird sign, the Latin name for it, right? It's a mammal, an herbivore. So it's a mammal because it's warm blooded or endothermic, makes its heat from inside. And it's covered with fur and has live young. It's an herbivore, so it eats plants. And um, they live, their lifespan is up to about three years in the wild. They weigh, they're, they're about 15 to 18 plus inches in length. And they weigh about 1.75 pounds to 3.4 pounds, something like that, almost four pounds. So they can get pretty big. You've seen some probably big cottontails in your yard, all right? So Eastern cottontails live about everywhere. And no, they don't wear a vest and bring a cute little basket to your yard. Not these kind anyways, okay? So that's the white bunny that we think about, right? And that's more like a domestic bunny. So the bunnies that we have in Ohio, the Eastern Cottontail Rabbit, they live all over and you might have tons in your yard. If they were a little more, uh, less, if they were a little less scared, they'd probably run right behind this picture. I'm at my house right now and we have tons of rabbits. So, so I love every animal, but my husband gets kind of frustrated with these rabbits because they like to eat his garden. So we'll talk about a little in a little here in a minute what to do if they're getting mom and dad's or, you know, your plants, okay? So the Eastern Cottontail, I have a model of a baby here, are named for their cottony, cotton ball tail, okay? That's how they got their name. So a lot of times our wildlife are named for what they look like or what they eat many times. They live in your backyards, at the edges of farm fields, at the edges of woods. They like really open areas. And they come out all day and all night. So they're crepuscular. I can't say the word. They're not diurnal. Diurnal is just during the day. Nocturnal is just at night. They're crepuscular. So they come out day and night. I see rabbits chasing each other in my yard in the daytime. And if I come out here at night, I'll see rabbits at night. So they come out at any given time. Now, what do they do to protect themselves? Because they're pretty small. I mean, especially if you're a little bunny this big, you're on your own. Remember, when a bunny is fist-sized and its ears are up, eyes open, it's on its own. Does not need us to interfere, okay? So this little guy is on his own. What does he do to protect himself? Well, look, what kind of predators might get him? So there's lots of predators that will eat a bunny. And that's one of the functions they serve in the wild, sadly enough. They do provide food to a lot of animals. That's the way nature is. So hawks, owls, you know, hawks are out during the day, owls at night. Bunnies can be out both times. Um, fox, coyote, snakes, um, and even our dogs and cats, unfortunately. So what do they do to protect themselves? One of the things they do is they can run up to 18 miles an hour. That's pretty amazing. So, and they also have a zigzag kind of run to them. So it's hard to catch them sometimes. So they do have a defense. They also will do something called freezing. They just freeze like, okay, freeze in place. And sometimes they won't get noticed because they're just freezing in place. So, and they, they can camouflage because of their coloring. They're kind of a drab brown and white color. They can blend in with some of the environment in Ohio. So that's one of the ways, two of the ways they can defend themselves. They don't shoot venom, right? They don't have sharp teeth or claws, but they can run fast and they can hide and they can freeze and, you know, act like they're not even there, right? So they also have an excellent sense of smell. They have about 100 million scent receptors in their noses. That's pretty amazing, which they twitch to expose as many of the scent receptors as possible to sniff out danger. An eastern cottontail rabbit can twitch its nose between 20 to 120 times a minute. So they're trying to see, sense what's around them. Okay, so a lot of times you come out, they might freeze, they might be twitching their nose to, to see who's out there, okay? Now, even though they have great speed and they're great at hiding, they still are predators to a lot of things and they will get eaten 
a lot, right? Because they are prey species. They are not a predator. They're going to munch on grasses, different types of grasses. Um, dandelions and little weeds in your grass and clover, different kinds of things in your yard. So one of the great things about having a diverse yard is so that rabbits and insects and other things can eat on those things in your yard. They don't just like all grass, okay? They like things like, huh, can I find any? Well, in my yard where I'm sitting, I have clover. There's some dandelion leaves back there. They like stuff like that. So, and in turn, if they can find the food, then their predators can find them for food, okay? And, you know, these guys are fun to watch. They're not just predators. They're a really cool animal to kind of just watch and kind of fun to watch. And kids think they're really cute and they are pretty cute. So, they do get snatched by predators a lot. But, mom has um, sometimes several gosh, what did I, I want to make sure I get this right. They breed several times a year and have a lot of babies. I want to make sure I got that statement right. So they can have many different nests a year. So as soon as the babies, even though they might still be in their nest, as soon as their eyes are open, their ears are up, mom leaves that nest and it goes to, an, and goes and makes another nest usually, breeds and makes another nest. So she has lots of litters a year. Okay. So she can help bring that population up. So all over your yard, your woods, you know, the edges of the woods, there will be rabbit's nests usually. All right, so um, one another thing about bunnies to remember is that moms don't feed their bunnies much during the day. She'll feed this bunny a couple times a day maybe and just stuff it full. It's good as like bulging with milk. Okay, her milk, not cow's milk like us. So she feeds them with her milk. And she might not come back to them until late that night. Okay, so maybe in the morning and at night. So a lot of times people will find a little rabbit's nest, with this, which is a little depression in the grass. And they'll see little, little babies in there. And when babies are born, they have fur, but their eyes are closed. They're little crazy looking things. They're cute. But you'll see them in there and you're like, oh my gosh, nobody's here to take care of them. You know, we might have to bring them in. No, don't. Okay, because mom is probably around. So you can kind of look at them. See if they're kind of twitching. They twitch a lot when they sleep. It's super cute. And their bellies are usually full. And if you want to just touch your skin and pinch it up, like when you do your hand, you pinch your skin, it comes right back down. That means you're not dehydrated, right? You can test that with bunnies too. Put a small layer of grasses or leaves over the nest and just a cross of thin little twigs, okay? Like a cross of twigs over that nest. Check it in the morning if that's been disturbed and the babies look okay, mom's been back. Okay, so that's a good way to test and see if they've been there. Mom, m wild mothers are great mothers, okay? But they don't take care of their young the same as we do. So we just need to understand the natural history of the different animals to know that that may be normal or not normal. So if you think something does need help, you can always call Bruckner Nature Center. You can look online, um, wildagain.org, hsus.org. Um, there's some other sites you can look at for good tips on what to do if you find a baby. So um, kids are born with their eyes closed. The mother, like I said, mother nurses them for only a few minutes each day and stops after about 10 days. So kids are on their own by about three to four weeks of age. So again, you see a little bunny out here like this, even a little bit smaller, it's probably fine, okay, if it's hopping around and eating. So that's some stuff about bunnies, but what can we do to help bunnies? We think, well, they don't need help. There's plenty of bunnies, they're not endangered, they're not threatened, but remember, they do, they're here for a reason. They do offer food for other animals. So some of the things we can do is to keep dogs and cats away from um, the bunnies in our yard, all right? The bunnies and the nest, especially young. Don't treat your lawn. If you treat your lawn, you'll have a really just boring lawn, you know, just grass, nothing good for the bees um, and the other insects that are, the other pollinators, um, rabbits, they won't have food to eat. And you might not have those predators that like to eat those, those rabbits for food. And we want to help those predators out to survive in the wild. Um, leave them in the wild. If you find a bunny, don't bring it in to keep it as a pet. Most of the time they will not make it. Bunnies have a very low success rate being raised by people. Um, even the people that really know what they're doing, the experts sometimes have issues with raising bunnies. Bunnies are very high stressed and any kind of stress can make them sick and produce bacteria in their stomach and cause them to pass. So 
the best thing for them is to live in the wild. Because they're a prey species, they get very nervous very easily and don't take to us sometimes. So, and and it's, it's not legal to have wild animals as pets. So just leave them in the wild. It's best for the wild animal. And if you have issues in your garden with rabbits, the best thing to do, there are some things online you can use. At my house, we have used um, granulated um, pellets. They're, they're, they like have some kind of blood in them, I believe cow's blood. And um, we sprinkle them around the garden and we also do the spray. Sometimes deterrents such as sprays, like a, like a spray of water, we've done that too. The rat, you'll see rabbits scatter everywhere. The spray goes off and the rabbits are gone. So that's a good way um, to get them away from your garden. So there's some different things you can do. And remember that with any animals, there's always deterrents that you can try to keep the animal from your yard, from getting your chickens, your garden, or whatever the case may be. Just look around for some good sources. Um, usually, there's a lot of products out there now to help you and to help wildlife survive. All right, guys, thank you so much. I hope you learned a little bit about rabbits because they are out and everywhere right now. And I hope that you have a great Easter and that you see some uh, real live wild bunnies, rabbits, I should say, in your yard for Easter. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Until next time, bye-bye.